have the pleasure of introducing our speaker. This is Mr. Warnock. He's the owner at A1 Automotive, which is based here in Lincoln. Um, married and with three kids, and he's gonna speak to us, and I think it's gonna be a really good presentation. So everyone just a little round of applause. <clears throat> Who's excited that it's Friday? Yeah, everybody, everybody gets excited when it's Friday. Well, hey, good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Kendall Warnock. Um, I am uh, a Lincolnite for the last, I've been in Lincoln for 20 years. Prior to that, I did grow up um, in Northeast Nebraska. Anybody in here from Northeast Nebraska? No? In a village called Rosalie on the Omaha Indian Reservation. Um, so it, uh, it has been a journey to get to Lincoln, Nebraska, and um, a lot of gratitude, a lot of doors were open for me along the way, and, and a lot of God's grace. But my father used to tell me that weekly. You can't doubt you. Weekly, weekly, weekly. And it stuck with me for the last 30 years since I, yeah, it's been about 30 years since I've been back home or lived back home. So that is my motto. You can't doubt you. And, it, and again, you guys, all of you, really have your whole lives ahead of you. And um, just make sure that you don't doubt yourself. So I started A1 Automotive in downtown Lincoln in 2010. So it's been, um, it's been 13, four, well, going on 14 years now. Um, this is our, our Christmas party last December. My wife, Desiree, and we have three kids, 14, 12. I had to thank for that second one, and nine. Um, again, a lot to be grateful for, and a lot of, lot of trials and tribulations along the way. So back. Let me start by, by, by explaining my story, and hopefully this resonates with some of you or all of you. So this is, uh, this is where I grew up, and uh, I was really, it was really tough for me to explain this at first because it was, yeah, I, I felt like I was pretty ashamed of how I grew up. <clears throat> but the older you get, I think that wears off on you. So that's where I grew up. I grew up with four siblings in that small, really small home in uh, Rosalie, Nebraska, and uh, we had a lot of challenges with bugs in the house, and literally, you know, we would have to, uh, we would have to fight off, you know, some bugs as we were eating during, during the night. So it was a challenge, something that, again, I was, I think I was pretty ashamed of at first, but as I grew older, it just, it kind of fell off, and I, I, I like to tell that story because, you know, everybody has a story, and I think all of us have a lot that we have overcome or we can overcome in the future. And this is, this is, the, this is um, the, the shop that I grew up in with my father. That is also obviously a couple blocks away from, from our house there in Rosalie. And it was a dirt floor, uh, but that is where the love for mechanics was born again about 25 years ago back home. And I moved to Lincoln in 2000. <coughs> struggling, struggling, struggling. Moved back home in 2001. My mother sent me back down here in 2002 in September and said, <clears throat> she said, I don't want you to come back home. And I didn't know what she meant back, back then, but what she meant was there's more, there's, you're, you're meant to do something more, whatever that is. But she told me I couldn't move back home. And I and wanted to because a village of 90 moving down to Lincoln um, to a town or a, or a city of 300,000, that was a shock. I didn't, I see stoplights down here in 2001, I'm like, holy cow, this is pretty different. So, um, but all I had was food stamps, as you'll see here. So late September, September 27th, and, and this date is, is accurate because I wrote it on the, the booklet I was sitting outside of what was then Shopco, 27th and Cornhusker, Shopco, I think it was like a super store or something at that time. And she said, uh, and, and I said to myself that night, we had lived on food stamps, and government assistance and for you know, 20 years. And I said to myself, I was in a 1985 Ford Escort and I said, I don't wanna, I don't wanna live like this anymore. I don't wanna depend on anyone. I certainly don't want to depend on the government. And um, I made a promise to myself that night at 1034 that I wouldn't 
spend any more or need any more food, food coupons. <clears throat> so I wrote that date, I saved that $10 coupon, and as you can kind of see, it's on my nightstand with all of the books that, that I've consumed or am consuming. So again, a long journey, and, and I'm not saying that because I just want that, I want it to be impactful for you guys too. Some of you may have some challenges or have grown up in spaces like that. Um, I know I certainly have, so if I can help anybody post today, um, I'd certainly be available to any of you. And as we all know, adversity is, is going to come for us. It's, coming for, it, it's come for me multiple times. It'll continue to come for me. And the kids here, you, I mean, you, you all have your whole lives ahead of you. But, you know, at some point, adversity is going to come knocking, whether it's a whether you fail in life, whether you um, fail at your, you know, at a job, whether you fail at a relationship, whether you, whether you fail anywhere, again, adversity is coming for you. So just be prepared for it. Just understand that you can overcome adversity, and that is something that uh, that I had a, I had a hard time doing for the last or for the first, you know, 15 years of my adult life. But I figured out it's 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 not going away permanently. So I've I've learned to deal with it pretty well. And, you know, entrepreneurship and passion, from my perspective, you, you have to be super passionate about it. And, and some of you are going to be going into entrepreneurship, um, but you, like, you have to attack your passion with everything you've got. The sooner you find that out in life, the sooner you, you figure that out, and then you relentlessly attack it, um, things are going to go well for you. And I've relentlessly attacked being a business owner for the last 10 years, life is, has gotten better for me. It's gotten better for my family. It's gotten better for, you know, my, my community that, that I really I enjoy uh, giving back to and being super active. Um, it's gotten better because I put everything, every minute of the day into what I'm passionate about, and that's repairing vehicles. So. Whatever you're passionate about, I really encourage you all to, to attack it with everything you've got. So, speaking of attacking it, these are numbers from, uh, you know, when I started the business, I took it over um, in 2010 from, you know, a guy was, what, you know, had a different name here, but I took it over, I took the lease over, $600 lease in 2010, and honestly, I mean, look at, uh, you look at those numbers like, holy cow, how did you survive? Like you made, what was it, $17,000 in 2010? And uh, I was like, my wife, uh, my wife was like, are you, like, are you really going to try to make this work? And uh, you know, I said, listen, this is, this is what I'm passionate about. But when I started the business in 2010, what I knew was I was, I was really great with communication. I was really great. Uh, with working on cars, but I wasn't great in the business space at all, by the way. So the P&Ls and the balance sheets and the, and the, and the GP, the gross profit and the gross net that, that in, in the entrepreneurship space, you know, if you want a Bible in the, in the business space, it's your P&L and it's, and it's your, your balance sheet. You have to have a really good idea of where your money's going, what you're spending it on, you know, what your, what your cost of goods are, all of that stuff, but you've really got to understand how that works. And I didn't really understand it until 2017. So again, I'm showing you all this because I have failed a lot in life, and certainly in business, um, or I, at least I feel like I've failed because I didn't have somebody that I could call or I could talk to or I was in front of me and saying, holy cow, how do you navigate not being this guy? That's why I'm, that's why I'm here today. And again, I spoke at UNL multiple times. I give them the same speech and I've, I've, got, I've had relationships with a lot of students that have reached out to me for help and I'd be happy to do that for any of you as well. Now, what I can tell you is, you know, I did not get this updated. This is the old software, but we did two point we did 2.5 million last year. You know, we're on track to do a little over three this year. Our quarter one was, a, was about a quarter million dollars 
stronger than last year's quarter one. So all of the metrics, the P&Ls and the balance sheets, all of that stuff really matters. Whoever's getting into the entrepreneurship space, um, if I can help or if there's a class that here is here at, at Union College that I can help with, I'd be happy to come in and, and, and chat with, with that group as well. So this is, so this is 2540 West O Street. Um, West O Street is where I could afford um, to be at the time in 2010. And uh, that, was, that was it. That was, was there four hoists there? Yeah, there's four hoists in that, in that space right now. But that was a challenge. That was, that was some hard years there because, again, I knew how to work on Cadillacs and Porsches. And we're, we're certified and have the OE equipment, Diag equipment for Porsches. Audis, Jaguars, Ford, Chevys, Dodges, everything. But at the time, you know, this wasn't, to be honest with you all, it wasn't super appealing to people to bring their vehicles in because if you look at it, it's pretty run down. But that was, that was I think that was $1,100 a month is what I, was, uh, what I was paying for that space. And uh, there were some, some really hard years and I was, I was trying to figure out life. I was, I was newly married and uh, yeah I think we were, we were close to having Lola at that point in time but again it was some there's some long years there on West O Street and West O Street respectfully it's just kind of a destination drive if, if you don't live out there like the chances of you going out there are pretty slim right it's just it's just a drive especially well it's certainly a drive from anywhere but it's a drive from here too so this is this is where we started to gain quite a bit of traction in 2015 when we moved downtown. So this is the current building downtown. It's at 25 or it's at 1117 L Street. It's kind of catty cornered from um, the Cornhusker Hotel. If everybody knows where the Cornhusker Hotel is downtown, but I painted the walls white for a reason because that's the level of service that we want to provide in the automotive industry. And, and now I've got the floor finished. I didn't at the time. But um, I, wanted to, I wanted to depict you know, a dealership environment in a, in, with a small business. And we've been really successful by, by doing that. So um, at the time, I had whatever your 100% looks like, give it on the wall. Now I've got our logo there. But my wife is sitting there next to a buddy of mine. I think my, my mother-in-law is probably thinking, holy cow, I hope this works for him. Because look at, look at the look on her face right there. It's like, holy cow, I hope this works. But it did, so I'm grateful for it. And um, this is the outside of the shop in downtown Lincoln. Um, you know, we uh, a friend of mine did some artwork for me, and we've got those holding hands on both those um, windows downtown. And uh, downtown is hard to navigate parking tickets, and I've, I've been able to navigate parking tickets a few by by parking some vehicles up on the, on the gravel off the, off the street down there. So um, again, super grateful to be moving downtown. You know, this is the inside of the shop here. We've got, uh, again, this, that's the Jag, but I just threw some, some maintenance costs up. I know you all are just starting out and, and have a lot of life to live in front of you and have a ton of opportunities in front of you. But these are some of the costs on some of the maintenance that we do downtown. Um, be happy to answer any automotive questions after this as well. Automotive industry st statistics, a ton of miles on the road. Um, we work on a ton of Porsches downtown too. So we're super grateful um, to live in that space and be really good at it. I was in Chicago last fall for four weeks for a Porsche class. And uh, again, super grateful to, to live in these spaces. Um, 3.6 trillion miles traveled in 2022 and as of 2023 there's there's probably over 300 million vehicles in the United States right now some more costs on maintenance costs uh, BMWs the Euros the Mercedes Cadillacs Volvos Audis and Saturns those costs are pretty they're pretty expensive to maintain but here's where here's where my day this is this is my day right here this is my daily reminders that I have set on my phone my alarm goes off at 342 um, 
And these are, these are really important to me because, you know, my, you know, the dates that I have there when my, when my parents passed, my sister passed, it always goes off at 12 p.m. every day. And just a reminder, just in case I get a little bit sideways or, you know, the day's not going well for me, I just, I, I, I recenter with these times. 12, 1 o'clock, model a purpose-driven life. 4.30, uh, positivity always wins. And, and the word for me in 2023 was dominate. And uh, at 8 p.m., I always want to remind myself that, you know, Julius Caesar said, I came, I saw, and I conquered. So again, these are really important to me. Like clockwork, I don't deviate from these at all. It's 3.42 every day of the week. My, uh, go ahead. That's a great question. Um, typically, 10, 30, 11. So at five, five hours, I'm good. What time do your kids when you wake up? Uh, well, I'm way gone by then. Yeah, I'm way gone by then. My wife, I don't, you know, the kids get up for school at 6.30-ish, but uh, I'm, I'm long gone by then. But, but again, these, everybody, I think with, you know, with the, with the patterns that you start to develop in your life, you know, the pattern that has made me the most successful, and everybody has deemed success differently. All of us do. But success for me is, you know, being a great father, being a great husband, being a great friend. And, and this helps me, this helps me check all those boxes, to be honest with you. Um, again, I you know, practice a ton of humility every day. I live in that constant state of gratitude I just, that's just how I, I operate, and um, you know, my wife and I have been super fortunate, blessed, and God's blessed me with a lot of opportunities here in Lincoln. He's opened doors for me that, that maybe I didn't deserve, probably, or I felt like I didn't deserve at the time, and still don't deserve. I could have easily, <clears throat> I could have easily, you know, moved back home, and, uh, but there's, honestly, there's just nothing back there. There's, you know, 80 people back there in that small town now, and there's just nothing back there. So, um, so we've been we've been fortunate enough to, to grow the business. We have a second location on 52nd and Yankee Hill that we closed on the lot. So we'll be building another location in, in down south there. So, you know, I, I keep I keep thinking to myself and, and wanting to impact other kids. If you, if you come from a place where, you know, you've had some hardship, and some of you, maybe, maybe some of you have, maybe some of you haven't, but it is, you know, life is all about opportunities. And if you, like uh, Ruben said, if you build those relationships and you nurture those relationships, you know, God's going to put you in a, in a space where you can be successful. And he wants you, you know, we all have gifts, all those gifts from God that, that we all have. He wants you to maximize those gifts. And I feel like, I'm on my way to doing that. I, I don't feel like I've opened them all yet, and I'm hopeful there's more, more to come there. So, um, from my perspective, guys and girls, this is how, this is really how I attack life. Don't be afraid to be different. You have to find your passion, whatever, and maybe all of you have found it. The sooner you find it, and the sooner you pour every single thing you've got into it, the better off you're going to be. Life will be better for you. Again, attack every single day. I always, 3.42, I'm out the door by 3.55, 3.58 every morning. Uh, routines are incredibly important. It's, it's, again, it's gym at 4 p.m. or 4 a.m. to 5, and then I'm off to the races in business and uh, whatever else, whatever, whatever ob obligations I have. Adversity, you know, we talked about adversity a little bit, and that is a, Again, that's going to be coming, and, and maybe some of you have lived in that space, maybe some of you haven't, but it's, it's going to be coming for you. Don't be afraid to fail. I listen to John Maxwell a lot. Does anybody, anybody follow John Maxwell? And he, um, the last webinar that I listened to, he was talking about failing forward, and you're thinking to yourself, what? Like, but he wants you to, like, failing forward, fail forward. If you're going to fail, get back up and keep Keep running towards your dreams, towards your passions. And, you know, 
when you start a business, or if, if anybody's going to be starting a business in here, uh, find that person that's, that's super successful in that space and then chase them down. And I know Ruben talked about having connections with people in spaces you know, that you want to get to or you want to attain to or you, you want to build a, a relationship with. Just don't allow them to not give you an opportunity to build a relationship with, with them. And that's what I've done. You know, I've traveled from Maine to Texas to Atlanta and Sacramento um, over the last few years talking to independent automotive repair shop owners and what, how they're doing. Like how are they, how are they outrunning, respectfully, how are they outrunning dealerships? What level of customer service are they providing that the dealerships are not? And that's how, that's how we hang our hat downtown. Like we completely outrun them. And I say that with a ton of humility because that, that wasn't always the case, but we completely outrun them in customer service. And uh, you know, it's pretty evident our Google business page is full of there's 600 reviews, maybe 630, but there's 625 of them are five stars. And I'm super proud of that. It's taken a long time. Again, I was one of those people, like coaching was not on my radar. I just didn't think I needed it. I was wrong. Anybody that's in spaces that you can grow in or that you have a passion for, um, you know, coaching is, is, has allowed me to grow. It's allowed me to find areas of improvement in my life, whether it's my daily routine, or whether it's business, whether it's P&Ls, balance sheet. It's given me opportunities. It's opened my eyes to opportunities to improve. And what, who knows what OQP means? Anybody know what OQP means? Anybody want to take a guess? Only quality people. You're close. You're close. And surrounding yourself with really good human beings um, that want the best for you, that want to, you know, that want to surround you, that want to nurture you, that want to uh, support you and your crazy ideas. But um, you know, I'm 45, and I I started surrounding myself with with just great human beings. About a, about a decade ago, and it's again, it's helped. It's helped. That's helped. And my routine has helped. You know, our customer service is really great. Our communication is great throughout throughout the repairs. But uh, yeah, again, I went from making seventeen thousand dollars a year to two point five, but it's been a journey, and uh, it'll, it's continuing to attack every day, life every day, for sure. And that is, you know, I'm a big BMW guy because I, I know them really well, but that is, if God's gift, that is God's gift to me is, you know, being under, I don't know how, how that's a gift, under the hoods of a car, but it's, it's, a, it's my gift. So I'll take it. Um, and my advice to all of you throughout life, and again, life is just starting for, for all of you. It's just, don't forget to open his gift because you all have one or multiple from him. And this is, um, my mother wrote this, I don't know, it, I found it in, in her Bible uh, when we buried her in 2009. And she had wrote this on a note, and uh, I still have that note, but I wanted, to I wanted to share this with you all too. It just says, live with gratitude. Be thankful for what you have when you have it, and hope that you wake up tomorrow, the next month, the next year, with the ability to do more for others and understand that giving is not giving unless you expect nothing in return. So um, that's, you know, gratitude and humility is just in my DNA. And um, I would encourage you all to, to grab, grab, grab onto both of them and just live life to the fullest. Understand that you're going to have challenges. Um, adversity is coming for you. But if I can help with, with, again, some of your seniors, um, if I can help anybody in this room in any way from from day-to-day -day routines to uh, reading a P&L, which scared, me, scared the heck out of me about eight years ago, balance sheets, business, um, relationships here in the city of Lincoln. But if I can help you all with anything, 
yeah, I would be uh, I'd be honored to do that. So, anybody have what kind of questions do you have for me? Go ahead. Uh, you said you got uh, married around like 2010, so probably like early on in your business. Uh, how yeah. did you balance uh, marriage and like the beginning grind, and how did you like yeah. also paint that vision for your spouse? <laughs> well, that's a great question. I didn't. Um, I didn't balance yeah. at all. By the way, uh, you got to live pretty unbalanced. In, in those spaces for stretches and um, living unbalanced for I was you know what brother I lived unbalanced for probably six years and uh, Des my wife she she always told me that she believed in me and if your spouse when all, whenever y'all are in that space of having um, a significant other like that that's 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 number that's always been number one for me like he, they she has to be able to support me in, in, in my passion, and then understand that I'm not going to fail my family, and that's been the mentality from, from the jump, to be honest with you. But she was, <laughs> you know, we saw a couple of those first years, you're like, she was like, eh, what are you, are you sure you're in the right space here? <laughs> are you, can you make it, and, and can you be successful? And, uh, you know, again, I was not, I'm that type of, I have that type of mentality, I'm not going to fail. Like, it's, you're going to have to, literally, you're going to have to kill me before I, I, I don't, I'm not successful in spaces, so. Yeah, go ahead. Sounds like you have a pretty disciplined routine. Yeah. Um, and I feel like owning your own business and, you know, having kids can really complicate routines. Um, how do you stay focused and how do you keep, like, balance in your life, I guess? Boy, again, everybody has different, diff different, you know, um, describes the balance of life differently. We all we all would have a different answer to that, but that's why like I have to I have to attack at 3:50 in the morning. Like if I don't attack at 3:50, I'm in trouble. And and again, I I can tell you guys, you know, hand on the Bible. There's three times in 2023 that I did not wake up at 3:42. So and that was because we you know we were out out of town and I, yeah I forgot to set my alarm to be honest with you. So my routine is 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 my daily Bible. If I don't if I don't wake up that early, then I'm not going to be able to balance. So it's 3:42. The reminders that I have set on my phone. Um, uh, you know those keep me in line throughout the day. But I try to I try to chop up my days in a couple segments. So I have three full days. You know the morning segment, the, the middle of the day segment, and then the Afternoon segment, and that afternoon segment has been directly tied to you know, our kids and, and my wife and being able to be there and be present, even though sometimes as life and the older we get, it's hard to be present because you have so much going on up here that you're trying to balance. So, um, but my routine keeps me as balanced as, as anything. Go ahead. You said you didn't have a mentor um, going into business. Yeah. How did you go about answering the bigger questions that you had? It was a lot of failure, a lot of trial and error. Um, the, again, the business side of a business, I would encourage you all, if you're passionate about an industry and you know I'm, I'm going to dominate in that industry, or I'm going to die trying, like the, getting the business plan in, in, in that business space of P&Ls, balance sheets. But I didn't have one. And that's why, you know, when I'm asked to, to come and speak to, to smaller groups, like I'm all in, especially kids in college and high schools that I've done, because I, don't, I, haven't, I didn't have that person. I want to try to help people avoid those failures um, that I had. And if I can, if I can avoid you guys you know, stepping on a, you know, stepping in a, a pothole or two, you know, growing and getting out of college and, and just day-to-day -day life, I would love to do that. But to be, to answer your question, I didn't have any of, any of those people. So that's why I wanted to, that's why I'm passionate about, about doing this. Go ahead. I just had a quick, simple question. So uh, on your, one of your pictures of your food stamps, you said there was like 10 or 15 books in the back that yeah. you said that you like to read. And like that's been one thing that I've been trying to focus on this year. How have like been reading those books helped you in your personal and business life? Unequivocally, have, have helped. Like reading, reading books have has helped me probably t times ten, 
and, I, and I'm not kidding, has anybody read, has anybody read any Dale Carnegie books? You know which one I'm talking about. Anybody else? H How to Win Friends and Influence People? Has anybody read that book? It's uh, like, I, if I, like, I would tell you to run after that book. And, and if you guys, uh, if you guys tell me how many people, how many kids in here have not read that book, I'll buy every one of you a copy and I'll, I'll, I'll drop them off. And I did the same thing to UNL at Center for Entrepreneurship. I bought 350 copies of that book last year. So I'd be happy to do that. So when I leave here, I'll get a count of who doesn't have it. I'll get them bought and then I'll get them, get them dropped off. Deal? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank You're welcome. So that is, I mean, that's my number one, how to win friends and influence people. It's been around for, I think, 100 years. It's an older book, but it is absolutely impactful. And then Shoe Dog, Ruben mentioned Shoe Dog, Good to Great. There's a ton of books, like you have to, like consuming books is the way, is the way you can get great, in my opinion, for sure, unequivocally. So if you're not into reading, which I wasn't between your, your space and my space until about a decade ago, now I'm reading you know, 15 to 20 books a year. So I consume a lot. Go ahead. Uh, in your busy day with kids, do you try to read in the morning or evening? I read in the morning. Okay. Right after the gym, I read for, you know, 10, I try to read 10 pages, at least 10 pages. But if I get consumed in a chapter, I'll read a couple. Gotcha. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions at all? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Crazy yeah. And you are the most affordable and the only one that will work on the BMW yeah. account. So how do you find to still produce the profits with such lower prices than yeah. where it goes somewhere else just out of curiosity? Well, yeah, I mean the dealerships have an overhead of ten million dollars. I mean the, but their their expertise and again, I worked at a at a Chevy dealership, so I'm not I you know, I'm certainly not speaking poorly about anything, anyone or any business, but the dis the difference is you know, the overhead. We don't have that level of overhead. And we won't have that level of overhead down on, on 52nd Yankee Hill. But the difference, again, is the overhead. They, you know, they're charging $200 an hour and, you know, and we're charging 125 But our level of, of, of expertise is just, is, is, is on par with them or maybe even a little bit better in spaces. BMWs, Audis, Porsches, all of the, the European stuff, a lot of people just don't care to work on those because they're different, but we welcome them. So thank you for allowing us to help. Any other questions? Anything that you all think uh, I can help you with? I'll get that book bought. Go ahead. Uh, you jump out a question too. Same yeah. time as me, go ahead, bud. Okay. Um, how young were you when you decided that you wanted to start doing and like, did you go to school for it or what gave you that passion? Yeah, I did go to school for it. I went to school for it after in Nor Norfolk um, for two years. It was just an associate's degree. But then I, I moved to, to Lincoln and I, you know, I was trying to figure out why there's so many stoplights and, and the things down here for a while. <laughs> and then um, I, I wanted to get out of it. And I, you know, I started at UNL, finished at Doan with a liberal arts de degree. But then I thought, I just kept getting pulled back to the passion part of it. Like my father, I, you know, I was just back home two days ago, and that, that shed, like you could take everything in life, you could take everything except for my family away from me. And that shed right there is the most important thing to me. I sold that, I had to sell my, my parents' home and this, this, this building in 2009, to, to, to be honest with you, to bury them to, for the cost, for $12,000, all of it. And last year, I asked my wife, do uh, you care if I buy this property back? And what, you know, she, you know, she would think, well, what are you, like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> it's, it's two and a half hours away, and it's a shed that's about ready to fall over. But it means that much to me. So I bought the whole block. 
take into context it's in a village that doesn't cost a whole lot to buy a block. So I bought that block for $8,000 and I have um, a, a, a person up there mow it. But it means that much to me to go back and, and, and kind of visit and, and understand that you, know, you never forget where you come from, none of us do, but this, is, this place means a lot to me and I was just there Wednesday afternoon. So, any other yeah. questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, I also believe uh, strongly in surrounding yourself with OQPs. Yeah. How do you go about setting yourself up with that? How would you suggest students do the same thing yeah. in the age of cell phones? Yeah. Yeah, I think from, from my perspective, like when you're around people, you know like what kind of energy they have. Are the, if, if they're negative, like I don't want, respectfully, I don't want anything to do with, with negative people. And you surround yourself with people that want the best for, for you, like, and support you and chasing your passions and chasing your dreams and, and that, so that's how I've done it. Now, it gets a little bit, it gets a little bit difficult because what if your high school friends are not those people and, and, and but you still want to be friends with them? That's where you get a little bit it gets a little bit sideways in terms of just evaluating people that you want to surround yourself with. Now, where do you want to go? You got to ask yourself, do you want to be the best in the automotive space? Do you want to be the best in, you want to be the best banker? You want to be the best uh, CEO? Um, you've got to surround yourself, every, everyone, from my perspective, you got to surround yourself with really great humans. Do they want the best for you? Do they have the best interests? Are they, are they, are they defending you when, when, when you're not in the room? Um, and do they genuinely care about you? So that's how I've approached that. But again, getting into networking spaces and understanding, okay, if, if Kendall, if, you know, if somebody's 10 steps ahead of me and he's in a networking environment, I want to, I want to be in that room. Like you want to get into those spaces. You want to get into those rooms. And I've done that with uh, multiple people here in the community, which I'm super grateful for. But again, surrounding yourself you have like if you want to be a, if you want to separate yourself in life, you have to you have to surround yourself with really great humans. Any other any other questions? Happy Friday, everyone. All right, everyone. Thank yeah. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. You're good. Uh, yeah. So you talked a little bit about kind of overcoming the shame, maybe. Yeah. Uh, kind of yeah. Like childhood and You know, it, it got to the point where I was like, I, when I sat at when I sat in that escort on 27th and Cornhusker, I sat there until 10:43 because I was ashamed of people seeing me checking out with food stamps. Because prior to that, the, the months before that, people looked at me like I was like I, I wasn't as you know maybe as good as them, and it really affected me when I was your all when when I was the age that you all are at. So that's why that's why. At 10:43, I knew they closed at 11 or 12, so I, I waited out there because I didn't want anybody to see me checking out and paying with food stamps. But that mind shift—it was just because I wasn't mature enough to, to handle the situation. I, you know, I didn't know really how poor we were growing up, but we were really, really poor. Um, but then it started. My mind started. My mindset started to shift. Um, when I, when I told myself that night I wasn't going to be using food stamps or government assistance anymore, um, I used them, you know, one, one more time I think it was after that, but I just kept saying to myself, I'm gonna put myself in better positions. I, got two jo I had two jobs for, you know, 15 years. I, you know, I was a firefighter here in Lincoln, retired two years ago. Um, you know, so I just attacked life. And my mindset started to shift because I just thought, you know what, this is, this is who I, this is who I am. This is how I grew up. That's how it, it's, it's helped shape me and it's helped keep me centered. It's helped fill me with a lot of gratitude for what I have and what God's provided me. And it's staying in that steady state of gratitude and with a ton of humility. That's how I've overcome that space for sure. And I'm comfortable about talking, you know, talking about it now. I wasn't, you know, a decade ago. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done this a decade ago. So. All right, team, anything else I can do for anybody today? Any questions? I'm gonna get, uh, 
they, those who didn't or haven't read How to Win Friends and Influence People, I don't know if you have a, a roster of who's in this class. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So, um, who can, can you raise your hand if you haven't read that? Or, and I, I want to buy, buy the books for them and I'll drop them off. Okay. So, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I'm going to order 40. Um, and uh, Lincoln High, I spoke to, to their football team. We ordered, uh, yeah, I ordered one for all of them. Uh, Center for Entrepreneurship downtown at UNL, I've ordered a couple hundred copies. But it's that impactful. So um, I'll get that book. I'll get it bought. I'll get them bought off Amazon. I'll drop them off to you as soon as they come in. And um, I hope you all have a great weekend. And if, again, if I can do anything for anybody, and I mean that, you know, she has my contact information. If you need my cell phone, if you want to bounce a question off me, I'd be happy to help. Okay? Okay. Thank you. <laughs>